I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're speaking with Reverend Steve Jakeman. He is the author of Encountering Jesus in the Fifth Gospel. This book takes readers on a transformative pilgrimage through Israel and the West Bank, offering a unique blend of photography, maps, and insightful reflections on the life of Jesus Christ and the sacred landscapes where Christianity was born. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Reverend, great to see you here today on Spotlight. It's good to see you too. Let's begin with the basics. Which is the fifth gospel? The fifth gospel, um, it is actually is the Holy Land. Um, Jerome, who... Um, St. Jerome, to say, who is now, who uh, translated the, the Vulgate version of the Bible uh, in, back in the 4th century. He was in the catacombs in um, below the uh, Nativity Church in Bethlehem where he wrote this. And uh, he um, stated that, i to get this right now, five Gospels record, record the life of Jesus. Four you will find in books, and the one you will find in the land they call holy. Mm. Read the fifth Gospel, and the world of the four will open up to you. Wonderful. Do you think that means it's important to take a pilgrimage to the Holy Land at one point in your life? It certainly is, yeah, because it brings the, the whole thing to life. Um, actually, being in the places where the narrative actually happened does open up a complete vista. And you can then, when you get back home and you, you read the Gospels, you can actually picture the, the places as they are. And it just takes you deeper in. It's, it's amazing on one level, though, that the birthplace of the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, is a place that is just roiled with turmoil, right? It certainly is. It's, and it's particularly at the moment, it's, it's so sad. Um, it's just so many people fighting over the different parts of, the, of that country because it, it means so much to them. Yeah. It has roots for many religions, several religions, that's for sure. Obviously, yeah. the birthplace of Christianity, the birthplace mm -hmm. of Jesus. Tell us yeah. a little bit about putting this book together. You really wanted to make this an experience for readers who aren't able to make that trek themselves, right? Indeed, yes. I mean, while I was over there, I was, I was privileged to be able to go over there and uh, I was able to afford it. And it's, it's an expensive thing to do to actually go to the Holy Land itself. So I, I thought, wouldn't it be good to actually produce a book that would actually open up the, the vistas and the place without you having to travel there yourself? And so I decided to write a book that wasn't just a textbook, it wasn't just a theological tome, and it wasn't just a travel log, but a mixture of the two so that you could journey through the Holy Land yourself from the comfort of your armchair. Absolutely, absolutely. And the photography we find in the book is yours? You the majority of it is, yes. Yeah. Yes. When I was over there, I took a load of photographs and I, I used them. Where I wasn't able to have the photographs I wanted at particular places, I, I sourced them and um, was very fortunate that people let me have the use of their photos free of charge. Which location, as you visited these various sacred sites, had the most impact on you? I think for me, the area that had the most impact was actually... The, the area of Galilee itself, because that's a part of the, the world which hasn't changed. I mean, when you go to Jerusalem and elsewhere, so often churches have been built on the holy sites and you don't get the, the, the proper image of what it would have been like at the time. It's and A lot of these churches are very ornate and it's, it takes you out of the, the experience. But Galilee itself is very much an area that would be just the same as it was when Jesus walked there. Amazing, amazing. Tell me a little bit about your ministry and your work in the clergy. Yeah, um, I'm a Methodist minister in the um, Methodist Church of Britain, and um, I look after four churches at the moment in, in Yorkshire, uh, Boston Spa, where I live, which is a, a large village. And uh, basically we have, I say, of the four churches, the circuit itself, because we work in circuits. There's two, two of us, there's my colleague Anne and myself, and we look after nine chapels and uh varying age groups and varying different types of ministry uh lots of pastoral work to do um we tend to have an aging community at the moment so they all need to be looked after basically and uh brought on in their faith 
Well, wonderful. They're lucky to have you as their uh, spiritual leader, that's for sure. Um, looking at your book, it almost is a storyboard for a documentary where, you know, you could go back with video cameras and capture, you know, walkthroughs of these places and interviews with the people. Um, have you thought about that at all? Yeah, there's something I'd love to do. Um, obviously, when things have calmed down a bit. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the whole idea is when you go on a pilgrimage, you tend to do the Jerusalem bit and then the Galilee bit and mm -hmm. move between the two, whereas the actual narrative of the Gospels, Jesus is moving backwards and forwards between, which is not practical to do on a journey. But the book, right. I decided I'd take it along the narrative of the Gospels. So you follow the whole story through from birth through his crucifixion and uh, resurrection and ascension. Tell me a little so, bit about the process of making this book. When did you make your journey? Uh, did you plan on writing a book and taking these pictures for a book when you made your journey? Or did that come afterwards? Tell me a little bit about the process. It came afterwards. Um, I, I had the um, the privilege and opportunity to go on a what they call a, a clergy the word I can't think of the word now. Um, it was a, it was a tour specifically for clergy to find out a little bit, so they could go and take their own tour at another date, which I have one booked. But um, so I went there, and I tend to take loads of photographs when I'm around anyway. So uh, it was only when I got back, and um, in the Methodist Church after seven years, they give you a, a three year sabbatical in order to uh, take a step back and rest and maybe produce something. And I thought this would be an ideal opportunity to put this book together. And um, so that's what I did. I took the three months off and I spent the mornings writing and the afternoons spending time, quality time with my wife. Hmm. Wonderful. Tell us a little bit about the writings that people will find in your book. It's, um, it's a mixture. Um, I, I decided what I'd do, I'd take the narratives from the gospel, but uh, I'd open up with the passage straight from the Bible. And then I would, I've then illustrated it with uh, my my journey, a little bit of theology, a bit of archaeology, all thrown in together, and some of my own reflections as well of how I felt at the time, at the place. And then I closed the specific chapter with a prayer, and then I just worked through the narrative all the way through from that. Hmm. When you did your journey, your trek through the land where Jesus lived and died, um, was that your first time doing it when you did it for this book? Um, I'd been before. Um, my wife and I went out for uh, a 12-day seminar at Yad Vashem, which is the, the Holocaust Center in Jerusalem. Um, there wasn't a lot of time to spend in the country because it was very much classroom-based. But mm. um, we did um, do a trip around Jerusalem. But my first taste was way back in 1974 when I was on a, a school cruise trip. And uh, yes, not bad for a school trip, really. And um, we... Uh, it did the whole of the Eastern Mediterranean, but we did spend some time in, in Israel and did Jerusalem and Galilee then. So that was first sparked my interest in the place itself. Yeah. Um, and then, as I said, the, the later one back in um, January 2020 was when uh, I really got into it and thought, yes, this is going to be fantastic. And later on, I could I may write a book. I didn't think I ever would. Right. But uh, And then the opportunity came up. Well, we're glad you did write the book. Um, it really does take Jesus from being an abstract, uh, perhaps just a historical character for some, um, and a person we have images from only from artwork, really, mm -hmm. to seeing where he lived and died and ministered. Um, that really brings your faith to a whole nother level, I think, right? It certainly does, yes, because... Uh... So often, um, Jesus has been westernized, if you know what I mean. You get these awful photographs or paintings of Jesus of blonde, blue eyed, and, <laughs> and Caucasian, and we know very well he wasn't. So, when you get to the country where he, st where he used to live, you get more of a feel of the, the culture that he, he grew up in. Yeah, absolutely. What do you hope the key takeaway uh, from your book is for the folks who read it? I think the key takeaway would be. Um, to journey with with Jesus in in um, in Galilee and Jerusalem and the rest of the Holy Land, and um, perhaps spark your interest to to maybe one day go yourself. Yeah. Um, you will notice it's a, a large format book. I did that deliberately because I thought 
a smaller paperback book with little photographs, you wouldn't have really got the the depth and feel. At least with a bigger book, which is here, the large photographs means you can almost climb into the the landscapes. Exactly, exactly. It brings you there more completely uh, to have yeah. the large format book. That's for sure. Reverend Steve Jakeman has written a wonderful book. It is called Encountering Jesus in the Fifth Gospel. If you're wondering what the fifth gospel is, this book basically answers that question. It's the land where Jesus lived and died. And he takes readers on a transformative pilgrimage through Israel and the West Bank. And he offers a unique blend of his own photography in many circumstances, in many cases, maps, as well as insightful reflections on the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful book. It will help you with your spiritual journey. It might inspire you to travel abroad and see it for yourself firsthand. Reverend, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you. My pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time. This time, until next time, on Spotlight. <laughs>